I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Nermeen Sheikh. Welcome to our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. The United Nations top climate body has warned that human-driven climate change has impacted every corner of the globe, with the poorest suffering the worst effects. In its latest report, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says greenhouse gases have driven up global temperatures and extreme weather while threatening sources of food and water, and the worst is yet to come. The report declared, quote, throughout the 21st century, climate change impacts are projected to slow down economic growth, make poverty reduction more difficult, further erode food security, and prolong existing and create new poverty traps, the latter particularly in urban areas and emerging hotspots of hunger. Rajendra Pachori, chair of the IPCC, said nobody on this planet is going to be untouched by the impacts of climate change. There is a reason for the world not really neglecting the findings of this report because they are profound and let me repeat once again we have said very categorically in this report the implications for human security uh, we have reasons to believe that if the world doesn't do anything about mitigating the emissions of greenhouse gases and the extent of climate change continues to increase then the very social stability of human systems could be at stake. We're joined now by three guests. Here in New York, Michael Oppenheimer is with us, professor of geosciences and international affairs at Princeton University. He's one of the main authors of the 32-volume report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. In London, Salim al Haq joins us, a climate scientist <clears throat> at the International Institute for Environment and Development in London, also the director of the International Center for Climate Change and Development in Bangladesh. He's the lead author of one of the chapters in the just released least IPCC report. And Tim Gore is head of policy for food and climate justice at Oxfam. He was a civil society observer at the recent IPCC meeting in Yokohama, Japan, joining us by Democracy Now! video stream from Sweden. We welcome you all to Democracy Now! Let's begin with Salim al Haq in London. Can you talk about the significance of this report, uh, how it differs from the previous report and the warning that it represents in the world? Well, it's made a significant uh, new finding since the last report seven years ago in that we now have very, very strong evidence of climate change actually happening all over the world, on both on land as well as in the oceans, which we didn't have the last time around. So there's no question that it's already happening and we're living in a climate changed world already. It then goes on to make projections into the future and says that if we continue to warm at the rate that we are now, we're heading for four degrees or above by the end of the century, and that is really a catastrophic scenario in terms of the potential impacts that are likely to happen. Even at a lower temperature of two degrees, we can still possibly manage, but there will be significant uh, uh, losses in certain parts of the world of ecosystems and indeed human lives as well. And that 2 percent, just explain for, uh, we're a we have a global audience, but of course we have a lot of Americans here, and the 2 percent is more. Two degrees, sure. rather. Well, it's two, two degrees centigrade, which is um, uh, over three and a half degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and that's the, the temperature threshold by, at which the global leaders and countries around the world have agreed that we need to stay below that, uh, under which we can probably manage to cope with the impacts in most parts of the world, although even uh, that will be difficult in some parts of the world. Uh, but if we go well above that to four degrees, which is where we are headed at the moment, then we would not only double, but we increase by orders of magnitude the potential impacts, in some cases, unpredictably. And that's really what we want to avoid. And hence, what we need to be doing in the longer term is to reduce emissions of the greenhouse gases that cause the problem so that we can bring the temperature down to two degrees or below and not to four degrees where we are headed. Uh, Michael Oppenheimer, could you comment on what Dr. Salim al Haq said, especially the significance and likely impact of a possible four degree change in temperature, which is where we're headed if present emissions aren't reduced, and also speak specifically about what this report says about the issue of food production and security? Okay, let me comment specifically on a couple of aspects of the report, which are important from the point of view of what will affect human beings. And for the first time, we have evidence that the climate changes, which we knew were happening, are actually affecting the welfare of humans. And I'll give you two examples. Number one, 
crop yields, which for a long time had been growing at the rate of 10 or 15 percent per decade and managing, therefore, to keep up with population changes and also uh, dietary changes, people eating up the food chain, those gains have slowed and in many areas have been reversed, with crop yields actually decreasing uh, in some areas. In fact, many more decreasing, uh, crop yields decreasing in many more areas than areas where they're increasing. Uh, and that's a worrisome trend. And it's, and unless there are major uh, changes in technologies, uh, for instance, introducing genetic, genetically modified organisms or improved crops, uh, we're just going to have a growing shortfall between the demand and the supply of food. That's going to lead to increasing malnutrition and perhaps starvation in some areas as the decades progress through the century. The other interesting area is that human health is being directly affected. There are more area, there are more cases now of people dying from heat-related death related to climate change than are, than are being saved by the warmer winters. So we're having more heat-related deaths tied to climate change than we are benefiting from the warmer winters. Together, that presents a very difficult picture because we are sure, we are sure that heat waves, intense heat are going to increase as we go into the future. Those are just two examples of how, as we move from a slightly warmer world of today to, a, as uh, Salim said, a two degree Celsius warmer world toward a four degree Celsius warmer world, eventually things spin out of our control. We had better reduce the emissions that are causing the problem while at the same time getting better at adapting to climate change because we're stuck with some of it. Tim Gore, uh, you are with a non-governmental organization, with Oxfam. You're head of the Food and Climate Justice um, <clears throat> Division of Oxfam. Talk about what this means and where justice fits into the whole issue of climate change. Sure. Well, um, both Salim and Michael have outlined some of the areas of the report that we're most concerned about as well, particularly the impacts on food and the impacts on hunger. And Salim is absolutely right. What's really different about this report is that it's saying this isn't just an issue for the future. The future projections are worrying enough. But um, what's really uh, significant here is that the report is saying that, this thing, that these impacts are happening now. We can already see the impact on crop yields, as Michael was saying. But the report also is clear that we can already see the impacts of climate change on food prices. So in the years since the last IPCC re report was released in 2007, We've seen several instances of um, extreme food price volatility, and each of those have been connected in some way uh, to extreme weather events, which are hitting harvests in big crop producing areas, whether in the US, in Russia, in Australia, and so on. And that's a very different picture of how climate change is impacting on food than we've had in the past. We, we've long said that, that climate change is a problem for, for poor farmers in developing countries that don't have the resources that they need to cope with changing seasons, changing rainfall patterns, increasing temperatures. But what we're hearing now is that climate change is a, is a problem for global agriculture. It's having global implications, including on food prices. And for Oxfam, that's, that's a big problem because we know that people that spend upwards of 50 percent of their incomes on food are, are the ones that get really badly affected when, when prices rise so rapidly. And that's, that's the, uh, just a foretaste of what, of what we can expect in the future if, if we don't get a grip on climate change. Tim Gore is... You, you asked about <laughs> it being a justice problem, and I would just say that... Um, uh, for us, it's, it's intrinsically a question of justice, because not only is it the inequalities in wealth and power which are driving climate change, it's the fossil fuel industry which is um, making absolutely no bones about the fact that it's going to continue to, uh, to, to, to burn fossil fuels at, at, a, at, a, at a rate of knots, driving uh, greenhouse gases uh, into the atmosphere and, and driving this problem. That's a problem of inequality of, of wealth and power of those corporations. Um, but it's also it's the poorest, it's the least vulnerable that are um, ill-prepared to cope and are, gonna, uh, are already feeling those impacts first and worst. And so, if anything, climate change is set to increase the inequalities that we see on this planet. And, and that really is a worrying picture for us. Tim Gore is with Oxfam. They just put out a report called Hot and Hungry on the first day of the IPCC meeting in, uh, in Yokohama, Japan. Uh, we are also joined by Salim Haq and Michael Oppenheimer, both co-authors of the, new the newly released uh, International Panel on Climate Change report. We'll come back with, to them in a moment. <laughs> 